Also, the ancient Greeks before Christ was able to find out how big the moon was and how far away the moon was. So you can't lay a measuring stick to the moon, but simply using geometry and what he knows about the eclipses and how big the shadow is, then he was able to deduce how big the moon must be and how far away the moon must be, and he was remarkably close, very close, using what he knew. Galileo once said that mathematics is the language in which God created the universe. So everything that's in the universe is related in a very mathematical way. That means that if you drop a marble down a track today and then come back tomorrow, it'll go exactly the same. You can rely on it being exactly the same and if you can figure it out, there is a mathematical relationship to how fast and what the angle is and how uh, what the ball is and all of that, all of those things, the parts of what you're observing can be related to each other using math. Now this is really hard to teach. The idea of the scientific method is, and you've probably been taught it every year you've ever had science, the scientific method is you observe and from your observations you have a question and then you make a very bold statement called a hypothesis saying, this is what I think is true. Then, the, here comes the hard part, you try to imagine an experiment that you could do, that you could do over and over again, that can prove your statement wrong. So, you would think that you would want to prove yourself right, but most of the time you're thinking, is there any way that I can disprove my hypothesis? And you design an experiment to try to make yourself fail. And if you can't fail, then you know that what you guessed was right. If you did fail, then you have to rework the hypothesis, make a different statement, and then make another experiment try to fail. So science learns so much, not because we're, so, uh, we're trying to, to look so good. Science knows so much because we're trying to, to make ourselves fall and if we fall we know we're right about being wrong that's pretty cool if we can't fail if we can't make it wrong then we know that we've stumbled onto something that's actually true about the universe so this is a review of what I just said you look observe you make a hypothesis you predict what a hypothesis and then you perform experiments to try to to make yourself fail and then you organize a statement that will make sense of what you found. So a person who is doing science is always curious, always trying, and any time that you blow it, you tell everybody in the world that you blow it. You are going to be wrong almost all the time. You're almost never going to be right when you conduct an experiment. When you're cutting edge, where nobody in the world knows what you're looking at, and you don't know, and you've never seen it, and you don't know the relationship, and you can't go to the back of the book and find the answer, then you have to be willing to be wrong and make sure that you're very careful in how you go about it. So you're curious, you keep going, you're not, you're not easily um, put off from your goals, and then you just, as you keep going, and you're willing to, to change every time that you find that you've made a mistake, then you will find something. When you say something is a fact in science, it's not necessarily true. It just means it's agreed on by almost everybody. And there are lots of times that almost everybody has blown it. Okay, so a fact can change. Now a fact, if you want to talk about truth, is something that's actually true. And science uh, uh, tries, strives to do it. But that doesn't mean they're going to do it. But as to the best of their understanding and what they've fit, fiddled with, they say these things are fact. A hypothesis is a guess about something that you don't know yet. And so then you do experiments to test it. Once enough people, and I don't know what that means really, but enough people see that something is a fact, it's considered to be a law. So gravity is a law thermodynamics is a law, things that no one disputes and everyone that's done an experiment can do it over and over again. 
Even we in our classroom can do it. So the, it's considered a law. A theory is a whole lot of facts together and how you, a, a person that's able to kind of put what am I looking at and a theory is something that encompasses a lot of research and then can be tweaked. So a theory can change, it can be modified, it can even be abandoned. So science is recording natural phenomena and discovering things. Art is interpretation of her human experience and religion involves faith and worship of the supreme being. These are just definitions. So there is re realms of science that you can't do. Like I, if I can't test it, if I can't measure it, then I don't consider it science. Many, many scientists are religious people and believe, for instance, in creation, say, but since they cannot prove that, they can't measure it, it's something that can't be repeated, most scientific work is considered very secular, not artistic, not religious, but only, it's, it's, it's called um, basically do on the numbers, only measuring something and the data involved. And the, one of the last things is technology. If you know something, you can make money. And so technology usually is making money or using something for purposes to help humanity based upon what we know of the world. Physical sciences um, is geology, that's rocks, astronomy, which is the space, chemistry, physics, oceanography, um, these things. Life sciences are anything alive, biology, botany, zoology. And physics is something that connects all of it. Also chemistry does. So the physical sciences actually undermine all the sciences. And so to use it is a good bang for your buck.